of you to stop what you're doing and listen. Hello and welcome to episode 65. I am Mashi Poo and we are on lockdown. Arizona has been shut down until April 30th. School is over. Everything has been canceled for the rest of the school year. No online classes, nothing. Summer starts in March. But you can't do anything because you're ordered to stay at home. So, yeah, this whole thing is a little crazy. Still doing my best not to catch a virus. So far, so good. You know what else is so good? Or a good job. According to the president, if only 100,000 to 200,000 Americans die, then he considers that a pretty good job. Really? 100 to 200,000 dead is a good job? Hmm. If that same person would have taken action sooner when he was briefed about this back in January, you wouldn't have to worry about numbers that high. But he didn't. And now that's what we're looking at. 100 to 200,000 people dead, maybe even more. People who have lost their jobs. People who have had to shut down their businesses permanently. People that can't pay their bills. Yeah, it's just a great job. Really good job for the American people. But hey, a lot of people voted for him. And a lot of people are going to vote for him again because we're just that stupid. He's got too many puppets in the palm of his hands. And it's just, it's so obvious. He's sitting there saying that people want to go back to work Mm, there's a difference between wanting to go back and needing to go back people need to go back because they need money they don't necessarily want to go back because they don't want to catch a virus but he doesn't understand the difference there because he came from a wealthy family and everything was given to him he doesn't understand need he only understands want he's a guy that can't relate to the american people but yet people vote for him which is a bad idea Voting for a wealthy businessman that can't relate to American citizens. Wow, genius. And just a reminder that Canadians are getting $2,000 a month for however long this goes on for, and Americans are getting a one-time payment of $1,200. And Canadians have free health care, and Americans don't. God, we're so smart. At least we're nice and fat, though. We have that to be proud of. Whatever. Let's just get right into gaming. How many weeks in a row can I talk about Modern Warfare 2 Campaign Remastered? Let's make it three weeks. And this should be the final week because it should be releasing on Tuesday when this goes up. Germany's PlayStation Store appears to have leaked the first official information on Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 Campaign Remastered. The listing says March 31st for the release date. The leaked trailer showcases the campaign gameplay from Modern Warfare 2 Campaign Remastered alongside the end revealing the underwater ghost team bundle that includes the OG ghost skin for Call of Duty Modern Warfare and Call of Duty Warzone. And in that bundle you get the original ghost skin, you get a weapon blueprint, another weapon blueprint, a weapon charm, a finishing move, a voice quip, player card, and emblem. The trailer says contains the campaign mode from the original Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 only, multiplayer and cooperative modes not included. So that means no spec ops either. The Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 campaign has been completely remastered with improved textures, animations, physical rendering, HDR lighting, and more. And again, the release date supposedly is Tuesday, March 31st. And apparently this has been done since 2018, I guess at the end of the trailer at the bottom where it says like the copyright, it shows the date and it says 2018, not 2020. So I guess Activision has been sitting on this for a while and they've just been waiting for the right time to release it. And apparently they thought right now is the right time. And people are also speculating that there's no multiplayer because they don't want to have three multiplayers going on at the same time. They don't want to have Modern Warfare going, Warzone going, and Modern Warfare 2. So that's great. Uh, At the time of this recording, no price has been given yet, so I don't know how much it's going to cost. Is it worth it? No. (laughs) If you've played the campaign before, no. Whatever the price is, it's not worth it. You don't need to play this again. If you've never played it before, then maybe. If it's like $20 or less, sure. If it's more than that, you can skip it. You've lived your life without it up until this point. You can continue to live without it. 
So hopefully this all comes true on Tuesday and the two year long rumors can finally come to an end. And then we can all start complaining why there's no multiplayer. But we're not done with Call of Duty just yet. We gotta talk about skill based matchmaking. So Nade Shot, who was a former pro, no idea what he does nowadays. He was saying that he doesn't understand why developers spend so much time integrating skill based matchmaking. No one likes it. Which I agree with. Nobody does like it. Unless you're going to put it in a ranked competitive mode. Then it's fine. That's where it should be. It should never be in casual matches. So someone then linked that to Michael Condry, who used to work at Sledgehammer Games, and he responded. He said, ask Activision. Never directed into Call of Duty for me. Analytics, skill-based matchmaking, monetization, dedicated server coverage, all driven from Activision, Central Tech, and production teams. He then said that devs have frustratingly little influence on those decisions and that they could not control the changes despite the Call of Duty community feedback on the issues. So he's saying Activision controls all of that, which we know they control monetization and servers, like that's a given. But for him to say that they control skill-based matchmaking as well, like that's kind of interesting. Why would Activision want that so badly in what is supposed to be casual matches? That just doesn't make sense. Like they've had Call of Duty games in the past with successful league play, like Black Ops 2, where everyone is facing everyone of equal skill level and it went really well. So why not just keep it that way? Just keep some sort of competitive playlist and leave the normal matches alone. Like what don't they understand about that? Sometimes Activision does good things and sometimes they just make decisions that no one understands. Like in Crash Team Racing, they made everything free. The whole like seasons thing that they do, you don't have to buy into that. It's not a paid for season pass, it's free. Everything in the game is free. You just have to play the game. That's great. And then for Call of Duty, they just like go back to the caveman days and I don't know, throw sticks at walls. Skill based matchmaking has been a big topic of conversation in Call of Duty this year with Modern Warfare as many users believe the game has higher skill based matchmaking compared to previous Call of Duty titles. Which I would pretty much agree with because I cannot do well in Modern Warfare to save my life. And I know I'm not getting worse at video games so it has to be the game itself. Let's take a look back. When did skill based matchmaking really start? Around Advanced Warfare? I think it was about that time. So all of the Call of Duty games before Advanced Warfare, without skill-based matchmaking and more on the connection side, they were great, except Ghost. Let's look at the Call of Duty games from Advanced Warfare to now, with skill-based matchmaking. They're terrible, except Black Ops 3. Is there a coincidence there? I don't think so. I think skill-based matchmaking is a direct reason why Call of Duty has suffered the last few years. It's just not fun. It's not fun anymore. Like back in the day, I could play match after match after match and enjoy it. And nowadays, it's a chore to just even do a three-hour stream playing Call of Duty. It's just not the same. And it's because of this. I don't want a challenge. If I wanted to face people of equal skill level, I would play a ranked playlist. Because that's where skill-based matchmaking needs to be. Not in the normal playlist. I don't want some sort of challenge. I didn't ask for a challenge. When I play single player games, I don't play on the hardest difficulty because I don't want a challenge. I just want to see the story and play the game. Activision just needs to stop. Just listen to the community. This is your most successful franchise. You really need to listen to the people that support it. But to them, it doesn't matter because they just... I mean, Call of Duty sells like crazy. And it'll always sell like crazy. To them, they just see dollar signs. That's all they care about. But you would see even more dollar signs if you got rid of skill based matchmaking because a lot of people who have left Call of Duty for this reason will come back. I would come back. I do not play Call of Duty anymore, which is a really weird thing to say because I used to be so into it. But I've just been driven away because year after year for the past, what, five years? It's just disappointment. Again, except for Black Ops 3, that's like the one I could stand. But everything else. It's just not good. And it's not even like normal casual players like me complaining. Like Nate Shot was a pro. You have pro players saying it's a problem. Hopefully with the uh, Black Ops reboot coming later this year, uh, they just go back to connection-based matchmaking. 
because they have slowly been making changes. You know, we had the supply drops, everybody complained about that, and then Activision eventually removed them, which was good. So hopefully they start to understand that listening to the community might be a good thing. So let's just hope that the Black Ops reboot goes back to what we all used to love about Call of Duty. Connection-based matchmaking, skill-based matchmaking only in a ranked competitive mode, Treyarch's in charge, everything will be fine. If the game feels and plays like a modern version of Black Ops 1 and 2, everything will be just fine. But we'll just have to wait and see. And also shout out to Michael Condry for even coming out and saying this. Alright, let's move on to Hunting Grounds. You know, that one game about that one character that's spelled P-R-E-D-A-T-O-R. That one word that you can't really say on YouTube because you may or may not get in trouble for it. So I'm not going to say it. I'll just say your uncle. From now on, your uncle is that word. So Hunting Grounds, the trial started on March 27th and it went to the 29th. I played it for one stream and uh, I was done. That was it. I don't want to play it anymore. It is not good. I don't understand what this build was. If it was an old build, I don't know why they used it because like the whole point of a trial or beta is to kind of like sell people on the game. They're also testing servers, but in reality, you're also trying to sell people on the game because every time you went to the main menu, the pre-order screen popped up and it didn't default to the normal version of the game. It defaulted to the deluxe version of the game. So they're trying really hard to sell this. But man, was it bad. The graphics were not good. It was really, really grainy for some reason. It looked like an early P dude, not even an early PS3 game. Early PS3 games looked better than this. Resistance Fall Man was a launch title for PS3, and it looks better than this game. A game from 2006 looks better than a game from 2020. It didn't look like a 2020 game. Didn't feel like a 2020 game. Apparently, it comes out next month. Good luck with that. The soldiers win every single match. I don't think uh, the ooh, I don't think your uncle won any matches that I played that day. I played as the uncle twice, I think. Lost both times, and every time I was a soldier, I won. So <laughs> I don't even know how you win as the uh, the thing. You basically just have to sit around in the trees and shoot your little blaster gun the whole time, which is really fun. This game needs a lot of work, and that's an understatement. The queue times were long as well. I mean, I was sitting there for at least 10 minutes just trying to find a match. And there was one time where I did spend 10 minutes waiting for a match. And when I got into the match, one of my teammates PSN names was I love Logan Paul. So I left and I started to find a new match. So that was a waste of 10 minutes. There's supply drops in the game as well. I guess what? You can buy those if you want. It's a disaster. It's a complete disaster. I had low expectations going into this and I was still disappointed. So am I sold on this game? I would have to give that a big giant no. I just don't think these four versus one multiplayer games can be good. Dead by Daylight is like the only exception. Everything else that has come out similar to this has pretty much just failed. I hope the final release of this game is drastically different than this trial, but I would not hold my breath on that. Next up, we have Mario Remasters. Super Mario series is turning 35 this year, and Nintendo has big plans for the plumber's birthday. That includes updating and bringing back most of his games for Nintendo Switch. The core of the report is that Nintendo originally planned to focus on Mario's 35th anniversary at E3, but since the event was cancelled, Nintendo is going ahead with that same promotion and it will likely hold a direct style event to provide all of the details. That info includes remasters, a new Paper Mario game, an upcoming Mario movie, and a Universal Studios Super Nintendo World theme park. For the remasters, our source is telling us that Nintendo is pursuing something like a Super Mario All-Stars 2 for the 3D Mario games. This would include Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, Super Mario Galaxy, and Super Mario Galaxy 2. It's likely that 3D World may get its own separate deluxe style release, while it's possible for the older 3D Mario games could come in a single compilation, it's also likely that Nintendo will release them individually as it did with Zelda. 
The Paper Mario game represents a return to that franchise's roots. This means something closer to the Nintendo 64 and GameCube games, which are beloved. Expect Nintendo to fill out the Mario celebrations in other ways as well. This could mean even more Mario games on the Nintendo Switch Online subscription service. Nintendo wants to make the Switch a great system for Mario fans, and we should start to see that soon. I talked about the Switch, so I uh, hit my Nintendo quota for the week. And that's not all for the remasters. Next, we have Near Replicant. Square Enix has announced that a remastered Near Replicant, the cult classic predecessor to Near Automata, so far, Square Enix has only released a teaser for the new version appropriately and oddly titled Near Replicant version 1.22474487139. It's being developed by Toy Logic in cooperation with Square Enix and Near series developer Platinum Games. The game was described by Square Enix producer Yusuke Saito as a version up rather than a remake or remaster. The new version will include fully voiced lines, new content, new music by the original composer, and even the possibility of a new ending. Nier got a lukewarm reception from critics at release, but interest in the game has grown after the smash success of Nier Automata. Automata is technically a sequel to Replicant, but neither game relies on the other for the story or events to make sense. The game is a pretty bog standard action RPG with some detours into other genres and comes from before the frantic and flashy combat that Platinum is known for, but you can expect that to change in this version up. Near Replicant follows the story of a boy in a near future apocalypse looking to cure his younger sister's illness. Obviously, like most JRPGs, the story becomes significantly more complex from there. Replicant was one of two versions of the game, the other being Gestalt? Gestalt? I don't know. And was a Japan exclusive. There's no indication of a release date at this time, but it is confirmed for Xbox One, PS4, and PC. Okay, let's move on to music. Only got one thing this week. And that is a brand new song from Trivium, the title track from their upcoming album, What the Dead Men Say. To be released on April 24th, it is still releasing on that day. Some bands have like postponed their album releases because of the virus, but Trivium and Roadrunner Records are like, nah, we're sticking to it. So a little less than a month away at this point, which is exciting. The song is pretty good, it's about what I expected from a single. The only thing, and this isn't really even a complaint, or that big of a deal, but the chorus can get a little repetitive because he says what the dead men say about four times each chorus. So he says it a lot throughout the song, and that's why it gets a tad bit repetitive, but it's not the big deal. It doesn't stop me from listening to the song or anything like that. And we should get one more single before the album drops, and that should be Bleed Into Me, because that's what Apple Music says. Basically, if Apple Music shows the length of a song before that song's been released, it means it's the next song coming out. So when Catastrophist came out, the first single from this album, we saw the song length for What the Dead Men Say the same day. So we knew that that was going to be the next song. And right now it's showing the song length for Bleed Into Me, which means that it will be the next song to be released. And now you know how that works. Thanks, Apple Music. Uh, also, The Birthday Massacre released their new album, Diamonds, which is pretty good. Also, I recommend it. I'm not going to review it, but I do recommend it. Actually, I'll put a link to that in the description as well. And this coming week is not looking too good for music because I have no idea what's coming out. So something better surprise me or else I'm going to have nothing to talk about next week. Anyway, let's just move on to the weekly pick of the week. So this week it is a documentary from North Lane, Australia. Where you at? Representing last week, representing again this week. I didn't even know they were releasing this. The other day they were just like, hey, you guys want a documentary? Here you go. Pretty much about the struggles of the band, how they almost broke up, the issues with the vocalist, 
uh, not the band. The band doesn't have issues with the vocalist. The vocalist has his own personal issues. And then how their most recent album is their most successful and it like turned things around for them. But, you know, no one's really touring, right? Actually, no one is touring right now because of the virus. The whole thing was that they were running out of money and, you know, right now they're probably running out of money again. So it's not good. It's really not good. If you can support any of your favorite artists, then by all means do so. Because a lot of bands make their money on the road, and none of them are on the road right now. So for the smaller bands out there, this is... it's bad. Also real quick, shout out to Avenge Sevenfold, because they released a message saying that they're shutting down their merch shop, their online merch shop, to get people to support other bands. I thought that was really cool, so much respect to them for doing that. But yeah, check out this documentary about North Lane and their most recent album, Alien, which was my number five album last year. That's pretty good. And now it's time to move on to the weird story of the week. You already know what state I'm going to, and I will continue to make fun of this state until those dweebs stop going to the beach. A Florida hospital worker is behind bars after authorities said he sucked on a patient's toes. According to WFTS-TV, France Beldoran, 23, a sitter at Fort Myers Gulf Coast Hospital, was arrested Tuesday on a charge of battery on a senior citizen. Deputies said the victim, who had been sleeping, awoke late Monday after something came in contact with the patient's foot. The victim later felt moisture on their toes and saw Bell Doran kneeling beside the bed. The patient alerted a nurse and deputies arrived to investigate the case. Bell Doran was booked at the Lee County Jail. That's it, just a little story. Just a uh, Florida hospital worker sucking on some toes, pandemic, it doesn't matter. He needed his fix, and he went for it, and now he's getting his fix in jail. It's just the way it is. Anyway, that's going to be all for me this week. So thank you for listening. Links in the description to Apple and Spotify and Stitcher and TuneIn, as well as links for Twitter and Twitch and Discord. More links to the Trivium song and the Birthday Massacre album and the North Lane documentary. That's all for me this week. Stay safe, don't get sick, and I'll talk to you next week. Later.